The Galactic Council Chamber erupted into chaos, panicked shrieks and frantic yells echoing off the ancient stone walls. Species long thought wise and powerful, reduced to frightened children scrambling under the threat of a new and mighty predator on the galactic stage. The predator? Humans? The cause of the panic. Humans had achieved the impossible. They had gone faster than light. Silence! Kronos the Wise slammed his gavel on the podium. I will have order! The chamber fell quiet. Thousands of eyes from a hundred alien species turned to Kronos. Bring me the messenger, Kronos commanded. I would hear this impossible news from the source before I believe it. So thin grey Paxian scurried up to the podium and bowed. I am Trelix, O Great One. I bring news of the humans. Kronos waved a green tentacle. Yes, yes, get on with it. What have the primitives done? Trelix straightened. They have gone faster than light, sir. They have achieved what we all thought impossible. I, I have video proof from the cloaked probes. A mutter ran through the chamber, disbelief, shock, fear, and from the darkest corners, avarice and envy. Kronos leaned forward, his three purple eyes narrowing. Show us Trelix of the Pax. Show us proof of this, this abomination. The video played, and the galaxy changed forever. The humans could go faster than light, and the Council would now have to go faster than ever to catch up, or be left in the dust of a fledgling species that all the old myths said would someday burn the stars themselves. Captain James Hawkins sat at the head of the conference table, his hands folded in front of him. The room was packed with brass and lab coats, all eagerly awaiting his report. Admiral Petrov, a gruff man with a salt-and-pepper beard, nodded at him to begin. The test flight was a resounding success, sir, Hawkins said. The FTL drive performed flawlessly. The transition was smooth, almost instantaneous. One moment we were in Earth orbit. The next we were at the edge of the solar system. Petrov leaned forward. And the crew, how did they handle it? Hawkins allowed himself a small smile. They were in awe, sir. It's not every day you get to be part of something that changes the course of human history. There were a few cases of disorientation and nausea, but nothing serious. The medical team is already working on ways to mitigate those effects for future flights. One of the scientists, a wiry man with thick glasses, raised his hand. Captain, can you describe the experience of the transition itself? What did it feel like? Hawkins thought for a moment. It was like, uh, like being stretched and compressed at the same time. There was a bright flash of light, and for a split second, it felt like every atom in my body was being pulled apart. Then, just as quickly, everything snapped back into place. It was over before I even had time to process what was happening. The scientist nodded, scribbling furiously in his notebook. Another, a woman with her hair pulled back in a severe bun, spoke up. The drive works by manipulating gravity waves, she explained. It essentially folds space-time around the ship, allowing it to skip over the intervening distance. Theoretically, there's no limit to how far we could travel in a single jump. Admiral Petrov held up a hand. That's all very impressive, but let's focus on the immediate implications. This technology is a game-changer, not just for the military, but for humanity as a whole. We need to keep it under wraps until we're ready to go public. Hawkins frowned. Sir, with all due respect, shouldn't we be sharing this with our allies? This is too big for any one nation to handle alone. Petrov shook his head. Not yet. We don't know who we can trust. There are too many variables at play. Other countries, corporations, even religious groups. They all have their own agendas. And that's not even counting the possibility of hostile alien races out there. We need to be prepared for anything. The room fell silent as the weight of his words sank in. Finally, Petrov turned back to Hawkins. Captain, I have a new mission for you and the Odyssey. We've identified a habitable planet in a nearby star system. I want you to take your ship and establish a forward operating base there. Keep it quiet. No unnecessary transmissions. You'll be our eyes and ears on the frontier. Hawkins nodded, his mind already racing with the possibilities. Yes, sir. 
will be ready to depart as soon as the ship is provisioned. Petrov stood, signalling the end of the meeting. Good. The future of our species may depend on the success of this mission. We're counting on you, Captain. Don't let us down. The council chamber buzzed with activity, as Kronos huddled with his team of specialists, poring over the data from the human FTL test. Holographic displays flickered with complex equations and diagrams, each one more baffling than the last. This can't be right, muttered Kronos, his tentacles twitching with agitation. Run the numbers again. A spindly Zorgon named Xylox tapped at his console, his compound eyes reflecting the shifting light of the screens. I've run them three times, sir. The results are the same. The human drive is... It's beyond anything we've ever seen. Kronos felt a sinking sensation in his gut. He turned to the others, his voice low and urgent. How is this possible? We've been exploring the stars for millennia. Our technology is the most advanced in the known universe. How could these... These primitives have surpassed us so quickly? Zalax, a lithe figure with iridescent scales, spoke up. Their drive is more efficient, more stable. It consumes less energy and produces fewer gravitational anomalies. If they were to mass-produce this technology... She didn't need to finish the thought. They all knew the implications. The humans could dominate the galaxy economically and militarily. They could upset the careful balance of power that the Council had maintained for eons. Kronos paced the room, his mind racing. He couldn't let this happen. He wouldn't. The Council had to act and act quickly. We need that technology, he said, his voice hardening with resolve. We need to know how they did it, and we need to do it better. I propose a plan. The chamber fell silent as all eyes turned to Kronos. He took a deep breath, knowing that his next words would change the course of galactic history. We infiltrate their society. We steal their secrets. We use their own technology against them. It's the only way to ensure our survival. There was a moment of stunned silence, then a murmur of agreement. The council members nodded, their faces grim with determination. Approved, said the High Chancellor, his voice echoing through the chamber. Kronos, you will lead this mission. Choose your team wisely. The fate of the galaxy rests on your shoulders. Kronos bowed, his mind already whirling with plans and possibilities. He turned to Zalax, a glint in his eye. Zalax, you're with me. Your skills as a spy will be invaluable. We'll need to blend in to become part of their world. It won't be easy, but I know you're up for the challenge. Zalax smiled, her scales shimmering with anticipation. I live for challenges, sir. When do we leave? Kronos turned to the rest of his team, his voice ringing with authority. We leave immediately. Gather your gear, your disguises. Study their language, their customs. We must become them if we hope to succeed. As the team dispersed, Kronos stood alone in the chamber, his gaze fixed on the holographic image of Earth rotating slowly above the council table. He reached out, his tentacle passing through the shimmering projection. Ready or not, humans, he whispered. Here we come. The XSS Odyssey pierced through the void of space, its sleek hull gleaming in the starlight. Captain Hawkins stood on the bridge, his eyes fixed on the viewscreen as the ship approached their destination. The planet, which they had christened Prometheus, loomed before them, a vibrant sphere of blues and greens. Initiate orbital insertion, Hawkins ordered, his voice calm and steady. Prepare the landing parties, I want boots on the ground within the hour. The crew sprang into action, their movements precise and efficient. They had trained for this moment, spent countless hours in simulations and drills. Now it was time to put that training to the test. As the Odyssey settled into orbit, shuttles began to ferry personnel and equipment to the surface. Hawkins watched from the bridge, his chest swelling with pride. This was more than just a mission. It was the beginning of a new era for humanity. On the ground, the forward operating base took shape with remarkable speed. Prefabricated structures were assembled, power generators hummed to life, and scientific instruments were calibrated. Teams of researchers fanned out across the landscape, collecting samples and mapping the terrain. 
Dr. Elena Sokolova, the mission's lead scientist, approached Hawkins with a broad smile. Captain, the initial scans are incredibly promising. The soil is rich in nutrients, the atmosphere is breathable, and there are indications of vast mineral deposits. This planet could support a significant human colony. Hawkins nodded, his eyes scanning the horizon. That's good news, Doctor. Keep me informed of any new developments. We're making history here. But even as the humans celebrated their triumph, they were being watched. From the shadows of a nearby ridge, Kronos and his team observed the base, their disguises allowing them to blend seamlessly with the human scientists. Remarkable, muttered Kronos, his eyes narrowing as he studied the humans' efficiency. They work with such purpose, such unity. We may have underestimated them. Zalax, her human features flawless, frowned slightly. We should proceed with caution, sir. Their technology may be more advanced than we anticipated. Kronos waved a dismissive hand. Nonsense, we are the superior species. We will have what we came for. As night fell, Kronos and his team made their move. They slipped into the base, their movements silent and precise. Zalax led them to the heart of the facility where the FTL drive schematics were stored. I don't like this, she whispered, her eyes darting to the advanced security measures surrounding the drive room. These humans are not as primitive as we thought. We should abort the mission. Kronos shook his head, his jaw clenched with determination. No, we've come too far. I will not return to the Council empty-handed. He stepped forward, his fingers flying over the keypad. The lock disengaged with a soft click, and the door slid open. Kronos smiled, triumph surging through his veins. And then the alarms began to blare. Step away from the console, Captain Hawkins' voice rang out, sharp and commanding. He stood at the entrance, flanked by Lieutenant Commander Volkov and a squad of heavily armed security personnel. You're under arrest for espionage and attempted theft of classified technology. Kronos spun, his eyes blazing with fury. You dare to threaten me, human? I am Kronos, emissary of the Galactic Council. You will surrender the FTL drive or face the consequences. Hawkins stood his ground, his gaze unwavering. We don't take orders from you, Kronos. This technology is the property of the United Earth Government. We will defend it with our lives. Kronos reached into his robes, his fingers closing around the antimatter detonator. Then you leave me no choice. If I cannot have the drive, no one will. The standoff hung in the air, the tension so thick it could be cut with a knife. Hawkins and Kronos locked eyes, each waiting for the other to blink. And then, in a blur of motion, Zalax lunged forward, her hand closing around Kronos's wrist. No, sir, this is madness. If you detonate that bomb, we'll all be killed. Kronos snarled, trying to shake off her grip. Unhand me, Zalax, that's an order. But Zalax held firm, her gaze pleading. Please, sir, think of the Council, think of our mission. Is it worth sacrificing everything for this? For a long moment, Kronos wavered, his finger hovering over the detonator. Then, with a growl of frustration, he relaxed his grip, allowing Zalax to take the device. This isn't over, human, he spat, his eyes smoldering with rage. The Council will hear of this. You have made a powerful enemy today. Hawkins stepped forward his hand resting on the butt of his sidearm. And you have underestimated the resolve of the human race. We will not be intimidated, and we will not back down. Now, you have a choice. Surrender peacefully, or face the consequences. Kronos glared at Hawkins, his mind racing with calculations. He was outnumbered and outgunned, his plan in tatters. There was only one logical course of action. Slowly he raised his hands, his voice tight with barely contained rage. Very well, human. You win this round, but mark my words, this is only the beginning. The Council will not rest until we have what we need. One way or another, your precious FTL technology will be ours. As the security team moved in to take Kronos and his team into custody, Hawkins turned to Zalax, his eyes narrowing. Why did you stop him? You could have let him blow us all to hell. Zalax met his gaze, her expression unreadable. I am a scientist, Captain. 
My duty is to gather knowledge, not to destroy it. There is much we can learn from each other, if we are willing to put aside our differences. Hawkins nodded slowly, a glimmer of respect in his eyes. Perhaps you're right, but trust must be earned, and your people have a long way to go. As the alien infiltrators were led away, Hawkins turned to Volkov, his face grim. Double the security patrols. I want every inch of this base monitored around the clock, and send a message to Earth. We need reinforcements, and we need them now. Something tells me this is only the beginning. Volkov snapped a crisp salute. Aye, Captain, I'll get right on it. Hawkins turned back to the viewscreen, his gaze fixed on the stars. The universe had just gotten a whole lot bigger, and a whole lot more dangerous. But he knew one thing for certain. No matter what challenges lay ahead, the human race would face them head-on, united in their determination to explore, to discover, and to reach for the stars. The standoff in the heart of the Odyssey's forward base reached a critical point. Cronus's finger hovered over the antimatter detonator, a twisted smile on his alien face. Captain Hawkins and Commander Volkov stood their ground, weapons trained on the intruders. But then a soft chime echoed through the room. Kronos's eyes widened as the detonator in his hand went dark, its lights fading. He pressed the trigger again and again, but nothing happened. What trickery is this? he snarled, his gaze snapping to Hawkins. The captain allowed himself a small smile. Did you really think we wouldn't be prepared for something like this? He tapped his earpiece. Odysseus status report. A calm, synthesized voice responded, emanating from the base's speakers. Infiltration attempt thwarted, Captain. I have assumed control of the alien's weapon systems and disabled the antimatter device. Cronus's jaw dropped. An AI, but how... Hawkins shook his head. You underestimated us, Kronos. Admiral Petrov anticipated the possibility of alien infiltration long before we left Earth. He had our best programmers develop Odysseus, a specialized AI designed to counter any attempts to steal our technology. As if on cue, the doors to the room slid open, admitting a squad of heavily armed security personnel. They moved with precision, surrounding Kronos and his team. Volkov stepped forward, his weapon never wavering. Drop your weapons and surrender, it's over. For a long moment, Kronos stood frozen, his mind racing. Then with a snarl of rage, he lunged forward, his hands outstretched. But Hawkins was ready. In a blur of motion, he sidestepped the attack, his fist connecting with Kronos's jaw in a satisfying crunch. The alien spy crumpled to the ground, unconscious. The rest of the infiltration team, seeing their leader fall, quickly surrendered. As the security personnel cuffed them and led them away, Hawkins turned to Volkov, a grim expression on his face. This was too close. We need to tighten security and accelerate our timetable. The Council won't take this lying down. Volkov nodded. Agreed, sir. I'll inform the crew we'll be ready for whatever comes next. Light years away, in the heart of the Galactic Council chambers, the news of Kronos's capture spread like wildfire. The Council members gathered in a state of shock and disbelief, their usual air of superiority replaced by a palpable sense of fear. How could this happen? demanded one member, his tentacles quivering with agitation. Kronos was our best operative, if he could be captured so easily. It's the humans, said another, her voice trembling. They're more capable than we ever imagined. If they can create AIs that can counter our technology... The murmurs of unease grew louder, until a booming voice cut through the din. Silence! All eyes turned to the Council's leader, Valix. He stood at the center of the chamber, his black eyes glittering with a dangerous light. Yes, the humans have surprised us. They have proven to be more resilient than we anticipated. But we are the Galactic Council. We have maintained order in this galaxy for millennia. We will not be undone by a handful of upstart primitives. He paused, letting his words sink in. But if they will not submit, if they insist on challenging our authority, then we will have no choice but to take more drastic measures. A heavy silence fell over the chamber. 
Finally, one council member spoke up, his voice hesitant. You mean war? Valak smiled, a cold predatory thing. If necessary, the humans must learn their place. One way or another, we will maintain our dominance, no matter the cost. As the Council began to mobilize its forces, preparing for the possibility of interstellar war, the crew of the Odyssey made their triumphant return to Earth. They were greeted as heroes, their exploits celebrated in every corner of the planet. But even as they basked in the glow of victory, Captain Hawkins couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. The Galactic Council would not take their defeat lightly. They would be back, and next time they would not underestimate the strength and determination of the human race. The stage was set for a conflict that would shake the very foundations of the galaxy. A war between the Old Order and the New, between those who would cling to power at any cost, and those who dared to reach for the stars. And in the middle of it all, the crew of the Odyssey, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, united in their resolve to protect their people and their way of life, no matter the odds. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.